Hey everyone, welcome back to Salesforce Made Simple. In today's video, we're gonna cover the Salesforce Flow assignment element. So this trips people up and for new uh, flow builders, it can definitely be confusing the first couple times you work with it. But in today's video, we're gonna give you the benefits of using the assignment element, some tips on how to use it. And then we'll also cover three specific examples uh, with real flows that I've built so that you can understand how the assignment element works in action. So let's get started with some things to know about the assignment element. There's a couple of key benefits that you should be aware of. And the first of those is that in a before save flow, it allows you to set field values without using an update records. And I have an example of that, so don't worry, I will show you in a second here. Uh, the second benefit is that in any type of flow, it allows you to update variables. And so we have one flow where I'll show you uh, but if you have a number, for example, set to a variable, or if you have a number variable in a flow, you can update that number with an assignment element at different points of the flow. And that can let you do something like count loop iterations, for example. Uh, the third benefit that you should really know about when it comes to the assignment element is that it allows you to add record variables to a collection. So a lot of times in the flow builder, it's best practice not to actually update a record right away. Uh, you'll tend to use an assignment element in order to change field values, and then you'll add a record variable to a collection and then update the collection at the end of your flow. And so that's our third flow example here, and I will show you that uh, in this video. And then the last kind of tip that you should know is that assignments often work in conjunction with loops. So because it's best practice not to uh, use the update records element in a loop, you're often going to be using an assignment element there. So knowing how assignments work will really help you when it comes to building loops. So as I mentioned, we're gonna do uh, three examples here and I already got them pulled up. Uh, but the first example is a before save flow. So let's jump over to the flow and I'll show you uh, what that looks like. So I'm here in Salesforce uh, inside the flow builder and you can see, oops, okay, I need to reload. But you can see this flow is really simple once it reloads. Um, this flow runs on the account object, and right now it's just set to run when a record is updated. And specifically, when the rating field on an account is changed to hot, this flow is going to take some action. So we just described the entry condition, and this is a before save flow. And the way you can tell it's a before save flow is down here where it says optimize the flow for we've selected fast field updates. So anytime you're running a flow and you are optimizing for fast field updates, you can use an assignment element to actually set the field values for uh, the automation that's running. And that's what this assignment element in the flow does. So we have our trigger logic, which is when the rating equals hot, when you wanna do some action. And so our assignment here, I'll open it up, is very simple. All it does is set the active field on the account object that triggered the flow equal to yes. And so um, that's it. That's really all it does. And I have an example account here. So I'll jump over to Salesforce. And we land here on the United Oil and Gas Corp account. And this is the rating field that's going to trigger the flow. And you can see down here, there's an active field and there's currently no value inside that field. And so what our flow is set up to do is that when the rating field is changed to hot, and when I press save, our flow will run and our assignment element will execute. And that will set the rating down, or excuse me, the active uh, checkbox down here at the bottom to yes. And I said checkbox, but I meant pick list. So let's press save and we'll see that the rating changes to hot and if we look down here at the bottom the active field is changed to yes and that's just what we would expect the flow to be doing. So I'll jump back over to the flow canvas and you can see exactly um, how that worked. So again we have our start condition set up where we're triggering a record triggered flow on the account object. The trigger is when a record is updated and the condition is that the rating was changed. And that's exactly what we just did on that account record. And because we're optimizing for fast field updates, we can use the assignment element to directly set any of the field values on the account. In this case, we chose to use the assignment to set the active pick list equal to yes. 
So that's example one. And we'll go back and we'll look at our other examples. So example two is that we're going to update a variable inside of a flow. So I have a second flow open here, and this is called the count iterations flow. And what this does is loop through a group of records and it counts the number of times that we've gone through the loop. So this is a screen flow and it's kind of unique in the way it kicks off. I'm gonna open up the manager here in the toolbox and we'll see that there's two variables here and they're right over here. So we have account ID and the loop count. So when the screen kicks off and you'll see in a second, I need to provide the screen with an account ID as an input. And then what this flow will do is it will go look for every opportunity that's related to that account ID. And it will store all of those opportunities in an opportunity collection, which is kind of just like a cardboard box filled with opportunities, or at least you could think of it that way. And then our screen uh, will tell us that the current count of the loop is presumably zero. And that brings us to our second variable. So I've created a number variable here, and it's called loop count, and it starts at the number zero. And then what we're going to do inside the flow is that we are going to loop through, I'll open up the loop, all the opportunities that we found in that first get records where we looked up all the related opportunities of the account. And that brings us to our assignment element. So for each opportunity that our loop iterates on, we are going to increase the amount of the loop count by one. And you can see that here in the assignment element where we have our variable loop count and we're using the add operator to increment the value of the loop count by one. After the assignment, uh, we have a decision and the decision is checking for a very special case of the loop count being equal to seven. And so when the loop count is seven, the user will be shown a special screen saying that they have found the lucky number seven. Now, most of the time, the loop count will not be seven. So in all those other cases, they'll see a different screen. And this just says the current count is now whatever the current count is. So now that I've explained this, let me go get this account ID out of the URL here. I'll just copy this to my clipboard. And we're gonna debug this flow and run it so you can see how the assignment element increases the loop count for every opportunity that we have found. So I'm gonna press debug. It's gonna load up the debug screen, might take a second. Salesforce hasn't had its coffee today, it's going a little bit slow. And there we go. So I copied the account ID from the URL and I'm gonna paste in the account ID for United Oil and Gas Corp. We'll press run and we see a couple of things happen. So over on the right hand side, we see that Salesforce followed the flow logic and it went and it looked up a group of opportunities that were related to that specific account ID. And we see in our screen element here that the current count for the loop count variable is zero. So again, what this flow will do is it's gonna loop through every single opportunity and each time it does, it's gonna increment the count by one. Now, when we look at this account, I think there's something like 10 opportunities on the account. Yeah, one through 10. So if I keep looping through, eventually the loop count will hit 10. So we'll go back to our debug and I'll press next. And we see, again, uh, a couple things happened. So the debug is showing that we went to our first screen and the current count was zero. And then we started looping. And so we were in iteration zero. That's the um, start of the loop. And once we saw the number zero on the screen, uh, the loop count was incremented by one using that assignment. And that's the point of this uh, exercise is that the assignment element is incrementing the loop count by one for each item in the loop. We went to our decision element and the decision was evaluating whether the count was equal to seven. It was not, so it just showed us the same screen that we saw before, where it showed us the current count. When I press next, the same exact thing will happen. So I'll press next. Again, it goes to the next item in the loop. The assignment element 
increments the count by one because it adds one to the current count. And then we check if that new count is equal to seven, which it's not. So then we go back to this screen. And if I press next again, the same thing will happen. And so we can keep doing this for every opportunity that was found in our collection. So now it goes to four, now it goes to five, now it goes to six. And when it goes to seven now, we'll see a different screen. So the loop count was incremented again to seven and our decision element ran. And then because the count was seven, it said, okay, we'll execute the outcome where the count is seven. And so we see a different screen. It says the current count is now seven. Congratulations, the loop count is now lucky number seven. May you have an extremely lucky day. And so that's a cool little <laughs> message from our screen. And when we press next again, we'll just see the same uh, count screen that we did before, where the assignment element just increments the count by one and takes us back to our first screen. And so I'm gonna close out this debug window now, but when we're looking at this uh, counting flow, you can kind of see the functionality that was described in the debug details, where we get a bunch of opportunities, we show the current count at the start, and then we loop through every single one of the opportunities. For each opportunity we loop through, we use this assignment element to add one to the loop count. Then we evaluate the count. If it's seven, we show the lucky number seven screen. And if not, we just show the regular screen. And we keep doing that until we run out of opportunities. And so now we'll go on to our final example. And in this example, we're going to be adding a record variable to a collection using an assignment element. And so this uh, screen here, or this uh, flow, screen flow, does something uh, very unique. So what it does is um, we pass an account ID to the flow, and you can see that it gets the account, just moving this around a little bit. And once it has that account, it looks up tasks related to that account. Then we loop through the tasks that we found, which are related to the account, and we use two assignment elements here. And so the first assignment element kind of takes us back to our very first example, and we're using it to set a field value. Specifically, for each task in the loop, we set the status of that task to completed. So again, that's our first example where we can use an assignment element to set a field value. And now we go to our second assignment element. You don't actually need to break these up into do two different assignments, but I did for this example so you could really conceptualize it a little bit better. In our second assignment element, we are adding the current item in the loop to a task collection. And so that may be a little bit confusing. Let me press done and I'll describe what I mean. So inside of flow, over here in the manager, you can create collection variables which are kind of like the equivalent of a cardboard box filled with a specific type of record. So you could have a cardboard box filled with accounts or a cardboard box filled with opportunities or tasks. And as you fill that box up, um, it will just contain a bunch of records. And when you're ready to update them, you can update them all at once. So it allows you to kind of do a mass update inside the flow rather than updating records one by one. So with this specific collection, it is a task collection, and you can see that when I click here. And we know it's a collection because I've checked the box that says allow multiple values. And so those are kind of the two ways that you know it's a collection. And so what we do inside our loop is we loop through every task we find related to a particular account. We change the status with our first assignment to completed. And then in our second assignment, we add the current item in the loop to the collection. And so it looks a little bit backwards on the screen, um, but uh, the way you could read it is kind of from right to left, where the current item from the loop is added to the collection. And then once we've done the status update and adding the task to the collection for every task that we found, you know, we finished going through all the items in the loop, we then mass update the task records using that updated task collection. You can see that here. So let's give an example of this flow running in action. I'm actually gonna go back to the United Oil and Gas Corp account, and I'm gonna create two tasks. We'll call it task one with a due date of, I guess, today, and we'll save that. 
And then I'll add another task. We'll call it task two with a due date of, I guess, tomorrow. I'm gonna press save. And so you can see these task one and task two are open. They're open in the system. So let's go back to our flow and we'll press debug. Hopefully it doesn't take as long to load this time. Definitely goes a little bit faster. We're gonna pass in that account ID and what's gonna happen is our flow is gonna go look up those two tasks that we just created. It's gonna loop through them. Our first assignment will assign the status of the task to be completed. Our second assignment will add that updated task to our record collection. The loop will continue until it has looped through both tasks and then we'll update those tasks inside Salesforce. So let me press run. And you see it's kind of working through and then it says all done. And we'll scroll to the top of the debug details and you see that our get account records ran and we successfully found the records. And then we looked up related tasks with our get records and that ran fine. And then we started looping through the tasks. And just like we said, the first assignment changed the task status for each of the tasks to completed. And after it had done that, it added the updated task to the updated task collection. And so loops only run one record at a time. So these first two assignments ran on the first task, then we went back to the start of the loop, and the assignments ran again on the second task. Then there were no more tasks to loop through, so we went to our update records where we changed the status actually and saved it inside Salesforce. So if I go back to this account now and I open up these tasks, you can see right now they're open, but if we open them in a new tab, the status for each task will be completed. We see that here, the status is completed and it says completed up top. And so those are the basics of the assignment element. Kind of taking it back to the very beginning, we went over the three benefits in the before save flow, you can set field values directly using the assignment element. You can also use the assignment element um, in our second example to update variables, and we did that with the loop count. And then in our third example, we used the assignment element to add a record variable to a record collection so that we could update that collection inside Salesforce. Hey guys, hope you found that helpful. Let me know in the comments what other flow videos you'd like to see and make sure to like and subscribe because it really helps out the channel. Lastly, if you're interested in learning more about flows, check out my course on Udemy. It has over 11 hours of flow tutorials designed to turn you into a flow ninja. There's a link in the description for a free coupon that will give you the best possible price on the course. With that said, have a great day.